Hi guys, Andrew here from Gatron.net Academy. In this tutorial, I will show you how to import architectural drawings saved as PDF files to 3ds Max and how to set them as references for architectural modeling. I'll also give you some tips on the setup so your work will be faster and more precise. So let's go. Before I start, I want to mention that I added custom hotkeys and some features like quick modifiers buttons to user interface. They won't interfere with the tutorial, but if you would like to see how to set them up, check my previous tutorial on our channel. Sometimes you can get your architectural drawings from the client in PDF format. It can be a single image saved as PDF or a whole document with many pages. I can open PDF in Photoshop and resave it as PNG or JPEG, but there is no need for it. In 3ds Max I can use PDF files as blueprints for modeling as they are. I start from creating a basic scanline material and I link a vector map to the diffuse slot. In vector map I choose the PDF document I want to use as a texture. Here are other supported formats, Illustrator for example. If the map looks black I tick the transparent option. I apply it to a plane and show texture in viewport. And now I need to take care about the quality of textures in viewports. My blueprints are blurry, so I cannot use them as references for modeling. First I will set viewport to high quality. It might not help, but it needs to be turned on. The next thing, I change default shading to flat. And now I go to configure viewports and here I need to set textures display resolution. In the texture maps window here, I can set resolution of the raster map in pixels, but for vector maps, including PDFs, I need to set it also here. Basically, I can put here the same resolution. The bigger the better, but you need to fine tune it with the speed of your GPU card. For me, 8K is enough. Now, if the resolution doesn't change in the viewport, try to turn the show material in viewport option on and off and sometimes changing both resolutions to lower and then higher also helps. I keep anti-aliasing turned off, also I can turn off filter result and blur in map settings. It will save GPU resources. If I can see pixels on the map, it means that I reached maximum viewport resolution for this texture. Often you can get the design as a multi-page PDF document. In this case, you can choose here which page you want to display as a map. Now I need to set right mapping for the texture so the proportions are correct. So I add UVW modifier and if it was PNG the easiest way would be to use bitmap fit option but it doesn't work with PDF so I need to set it manually. I can take the dimensions from here from the page size and I type it to the height and length. I need to make sure that also the dimensions are correct. I need at least one or better two longest dimensions from the drawing. It's important that it's the longest dimension from the drawing because if you make a little mistake, like a centimeter on the length of, for example, 10 meters, it's not really going to make the size of the model wrong. If you made this one centimeter error, for example, on a wall which is 12 centimeters thick, then it will be a considerable mistake. Also, in general, in architectural drawing, the longest dimensions like construction axis should be correct. There may be errors somewhere on the minor features of the design. They are changed very often and sometimes they may not match the dimensions numbers precisely. Now I will create a plane 1016 cm long. It's going to be my measure. And I will align the size of the reference image to the measure plane. So the length of the wall on the drawing is 1016 cm in 3ds Max units. I move the gizmo of the drawing to the end of this measurement plane, so it will be easier to scale the drawing. And now I'm scaling the drawing. I'm checking if the plane and the drawing still match at the pivot point. It's fine. At the end I can fine tune the scaling with more precision here. And it's okay, the proportions and dimensions are fine. I will double check on the other axis and it's fine too. I have all the drawings on one sheet, so based on this one drawing, I will prepare separate ones for every view or section. I'm copying the reference and moving the vertices to get one drawing per one plane. And I center the pivot points. All of the drawings are ready. 
I will model the building in a way that the height dimensions of the reference, like floor levels, will match through this max coordinate system in the Z axis. In Poland, where I live, the zero level of a building is the level of finished floor. Thanks to that, I will be able to use absolute values in all the fields where I input dimensions. I will not need to calculate them manually. I align the sections and plans so they match each other. To match the floor plan and roof plan, I can create a box which will mark their common element, like stairs for example. I align the roof plan according to this box. I place all the drawings around the plan and I name them accordingly. I move the plans below the zero level. I create a plane on zero height as a reference. I place the elevations and sections so they match the scene's coordinate system. So basically the zero level on the drawing is the zero level in 3ds Max coordinate system. I select all the references, open object properties window and turn off show frozen in gray option. And I turn on freeze so I won't accidentally move them while working. I tick back face cool on so the drawings which are turned back to me won't block out the view. But I have two drawings, the elevation and the section per every view. I will place them on different layers so I can switch between them. And the whole setup is ready. I can choose different views, switch between elevations and all my data from the drawings is going to match the 3ds Max coordinate system. Ok, that's it. I hope you will find this setup useful when modeling architecture. If you have any questions, please ask them in comments, I will be happy to answer. Check other tutorials on our channel and if you want to see more, click subscribe. See you in the next one.